So if you're watching this video, you should have already read through this document called the Linear Regression Test and at least tried to do the practice problem. And so I'm going to breeze through some of these explanations and go through some of the things that I think are a little bit more confusing. And then we'll talk about how to solve the practice problem. So the regression test is a type of statistical test that we can do to determine how strong a relationship is between two different variables. And so they make the point here of saying that correlation does not imply causation. So even though the regression test tells us how closely correlated two things are, it doesn't necessarily mean that one causes the other, although in some cases it could. And so here it says linear regression analysis uses the coefficient of determination, which is the square of R, or R squared, and the R squared value tells us the strength of the relationship between X and Y. So if you are creating a scatter plot, for example, if you've collected data in a way that you can put that onto a graph as a scatter plot, then you're looking to see how well X can predict Y. And so in this practice problem here, all these calculations are shown. You don't need to know how to do these calculations, and you really don't need to even go through and practice them yourself. They're just kind of laid out to show you how similar it is to some of the other statistical tests that we've learned about. And so, for example, here they're comparing height of a tree to the number of cones on the tree. If you read through that problem, then you know what they were studying. They've calculated the means of the tree height here, and the number and the means of the number of cones. And then they have taken the difference of each of those x values from the x mean and divided it by the standard deviation. And they've done the same for the y values. And then in this column here, they've multiplied those x with y. And then down here, they've summed it up. And so really what you're measuring or what numbers you get from a regression analysis are going to show you how much variance there is within each of the two variables that you're comparing. And so in any regression analysis, the easiest way to calculate it is just to get out a program in which you can do a scatter plot and plug in your data and then add a trend line to your data. And I'll show you how to do this in just a minute. But looking at these results here, if you were to draw your own trend line, you would probably have a hard time figuring out where that would go um, because these points are pretty much all over the place. And so this is why we do a regression analysis is to see how strong these different variables have an effect on each other. And so here are the regression results. There's R squared, which is calculated for you in the computer program that you use to do your scatter plot, which is usually Microsoft Excel. And in this example here, the R square value is very small. So it's basically saying there's a 0 0.052 chance that X can predict Y. And this is reinforced when we look at how random these points are, right? There doesn't seem to be a strong correlation here between X and Y. Now, the other thing you can do with your R value, which is the square root of that R squared value, is take this number and then compare it to your R critical value, which just like all the critical values we've learned about from the other statistical tests we've learned, the R critical value we find in a table of critical values. So in general, we are looking for an alpha value of 0.05. Notice that in this table, there's you also have the option of looking at an alpha value of 0.1 or 0.01. And then we need to know our degrees of freedom. This is determined by looking at the number of pairs. So in this case, there were 10 pairs. And then subtracting by 2. So if we go back to our table of critical values, 8 is my degrees of freedom. And for alpha at 0 0.05, 0 0.632 would be my critical R value. So coming back up and looking at our graph here, it says right here, the R critical is 0.632 for eight degrees of freedom at a probability level of 0.05. So the calculated R value is smaller than the critical value, 
So just like when we learned in the t-test, the smaller observed value means that you cannot reject the null hypothesis. The same is true for our regression analysis. So having a smaller R value than R critical means that the students in this case cannot reject the null hypothesis. They can't say that there's strong correlation between these two variables. So now let's discuss the practice problem. So here in this scenario, students were curious to learn whether there is an association between amounts of algae and pond water and water's clarity. So they collected water samples from seven local ponds that seem to differ in water clarity. And so by water clarity, it means like how clear the water is. Does it seem foggy? Does it seem like you can see farther down? So to quantify the clarity of water, they did this really interesting thing where they cut out a small disc from white poster board and divided the disc into four equal parts and colored two of the opposite parts black. So they're actually borrowing this procedure from a pretty well-known way of measuring water quality by scientists who are out studying ponds and looking at water chemistry and pond health and things like that. So this thing is called a secchi disc and the scientists will just lower it down into the water and they will wait until they can't see it anymore. And then they will mark a place on the rope so they know the depth that they have lowered this secchi disc and then they'll come back up and they'll measure that. And that's a way that they can measure how clear the water is because the farther down it can go and you can still see it, the better the water clarity. And so the students in this case were borrowing from this procedure, but instead of lowering a disc down into the bottom of the pond, they were creating a similar kind of disc and putting it at the bottom of a 100 milliliter graduated cylinder and then measuring how much water they had to add to the top of it until they could no longer see it. So pretty similar, but just on a smaller scale. So in table two, they recorded the volume of water necessary to obscure the disc. And then here it says, as a proxy for algae concentration, they extracted chlorophyll from the water samples and used a spectrophotometer to determine chlorophyll concentration. So just in case you don't know what a spectrophotometer is, it is a device that's used to measure how much light can pass through a liquid. And so algae is one of those things that tends to cloud up the water. And we can measure how much algae is there through how much chlorophyll is in the water. So here are their data. These were the different ponds that they studied. Here were the chlorophyll concentrations. Here's the water clarity measurements. And so they wanted to know if chlorophyll concentration is correlated to water clarity. And so in order to do these calculations, the easiest way if you have Microsoft Excel or a similar program is to plug in the numbers into Excel, which I've done here, and then create a scatter plot. So I just highlight these. Insert scatter plot. All right, and I get something like this. All right, and then I add my labels in so that I can see everything. Notice that chlorophyll concentration is on my x-axis. This is my independent variable, and water clarity is on my y-axis because it's my dependent variable. So if I want to add a trend line, I go up here to layout, trend line, and I went to more trend line options so that I could add my R square value to my chart. So I'm gonna go with a linear trend line and I'm checking this box here that says display R squared value on chart. And now it will calculate that for me and add that to my graph. So now I have my R square value and it's pretty simple to take the square root of this to get my R value. I get 0 0.965. And so if we go back to our table of critical values. And I look at the 0.05 probability level here. And we started with a sample size of seven in this case. And so my degrees of freedom 
are going to be 7 minus 2, or 5. When I come over here, my critical value is 0 0.754. And 0 0.754, as it turns out, is much less than the R value of 0.965. So in this case, the students can reject the null hypothesis, and they can say that chlorophyll concentration and water clarity are significantly associated. Now, the other way you can look at this is that chlorophyll concentration predicts water clarity with an accuracy of 0.932, which is also a very significant correlation.